Recently, you've played some pretty eclectic festivals. The FYF Festival in LA. I think you went on it after Solange. Yeah. Uh, um, I, we've done plenty of these kinds of festivals at the radio station where um, you put bands together and you think, oh, this would be great. But then one audience likes their band and like you know, harumphs the other bands that are yeah. playing. How did you find the audiences when you played these festivals? Are they still in your corner or are you reaching no, out I mean, to these guys? No, I mean, to be totally honest with you. When we, you know, we had two big festivals pop up, which was why we decided to say we'll play, you know, um, Panorama in New York and uh, FYF in, in LA were the initial two kind of offers. And it's, you know, headliners, Frank Ocean, I forget who the second one was, and... Missy and Bjork. Yeah, Missy Elliott and Bjork and us. Uh, Panorama, us and... Frank Ocean. Frank, again, and Tribe Called Quest. Right, and, you know, you know. right, right. And, you know, we don't go into something assuming that every fan is still waiting and, and you know, the, and the, and the um, excitement and anticipation has been growing in our absence. You know, I, I don't take any of that for granted. And you always have a question of relevance, and it's, it's hard to see how others see yourself. I've noticed as you get older, if you've been around for a while, it's like, when you've got fans whose kids could be fans and you know, it's just hard to kind of figure out what who you are <laughs> how people see you right. you know externally i'd like you to see me as bowie but you might see me as you know what i mean <laughs> right. it could be any the number old of things yeah um so we were pleasantly surprised to see a full house and an, an appreciative and engaged audience that didn't feel like we're the old guys, or we're the rock band. Right. We allowed yeah. the, who yeah. do we have on the rock? What are those things? Those are drums. What are those? Yeah, exactly. And I think rock bands are out of fashion generally, you know, these days. Um, but I don't give a shit. Do you think? Um, do you think we've given up too much on social media? That, um, that there's. I, we had a manager once who used to always preach. Um, you need to have a level of mystique about you as a band. But now with social media, people know what you had for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm a big believer in um, less is more on that front. You know, and I've said this elsewhere, but the Cliff Notes version of my speech on this is our decision making collectively always comes from our experience. You know, we, we, our taste and our judgment and the limitless, the endless amount of decisions made in making a song or record or presentation of a band are based on not what we think you'll like, but what we know we like or right. feel is right. And that's shaped by our experience. My experience as a fan, as a kid in Mercer, Pennsylvania, whose best friend was the record player. <laughs> outside of college radio airwave and way before the internet. I learned about music. I, I would put on a record and I could relate to that song and it felt like that person knows how I feel and this is magic and I'm not alone and I've got it. And I read between the grooves and I looked at the back of the record and I didn't know what Pink Floyd looked like. I might have seen a picture in Cream magazine or something, but it didn't really matter. Right. They were gods, you know, and they, they were... They were uh, from another planet that had the magic ability to speak to me and you know David Bowie was larger than life he was an alien and he was fantastic and I filled in the blanks as to what he was you know and, and whatever his real life was couldn't live up to what I projected he was and what his role was to me and I think as everybody's now a publisher and everybody's got a blog and everybody's got a Facebook profile and an Instagram and a Snapchat and the world can't wait to see everything about my fantastic life that I'm presenting to you and through a distorted lens about how awesome it is. I think um, as an artist, it takes away from, you know, in, unless, unless your vibe is that. Right. Look, look at, you know, DJ Khaled. If that's your thing, then by all means, go for it. You know, live an awesome life and use your dove soap or whatever you're into <laughs> but if you're trying to make art that i think people need to feel they can own and make part, make part of what they think it is you know i don't like to talk about lyrics because it doesn't matter what i'm 
what I'm writing about. If it means something to you, that's what it means. Right. You know, I'm just going to make it less important by by diminishing it and demystifying it. Right. So, anyway, that was supposed to be a short answer, but point is, I have grown to believe that I think that um, trying to stay out of the limelight a bit, leave something to the imagination. I think an artist should be mysterious, in my opinion. The ones I've loved the most have had that element to it. Try to avoid the need to oversaturate yourself, you know, that's my take. No, uh, I totally agree. I, the ones that I grew up listening to, I, you know, I knew nothing about them. You know, they, they were, the pictures would be magic. That was, again, the day before the internet and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, I grew up worshiping Kiss because, like, I Same. they were they were superhuman. You know, and they were. Super I needed heroes. that, man. I needed, I needed it. absolutely. <laughs> I really did. Absolutely, need it. and then you meet them, and it's like, hmm, it's not. Yeah, that's quite. a different thing, but. I mean, and the point is, hey, times are different. The world is different. People experience life different. People interact differently. I get it. I'm not yep. trying to say that's wrong. But I do think there's some lessons to be learned about the role of the artist, the role of art, the role of music. Uh, we still based it on what it was to us, what it meant to us, what matters to us. And, um, and yeah. it, it stays true to, to who you are as an artist that way. Yeah, I mean, as as we've been fortunate enough to be successful for a lengthy period of time, enough to not have to have a job, you know, other than this, the, the film career kind of thing that came up has afforded us the ability to care less about the commercial aspect of what we're doing in Nine Inch Nails. Right. And take a more, this is what it is. You may not like it. That's fine. You don't need, there's plenty of other options for you, you know? It's not going to hurt my feelings to say I don't like Nine Inch Nails. It's fine, you know? <clears throat> I think Donald Trump is an asshole. <laughs> if that offends you and you don't want to come to the show, don't come. Right. It's okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's your right to do that. Do your thing. Okay. <laughs>